Hello and welcome everybody to this XTB live news. My name is Walid Kudmani, market analyst for XTB. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the main events happening in the markets in this first part of the session, what we can expect from the US session, what to keep an eye on in the economic calendar, and some major moves on the charts and some key levels to keep an eye on. So today is Monday, the 24th of May, 2021. We have a uh, quite a slow but interesting session in the morning for Europe. So we have a lot of markets actually off today in Europe, including France and Germany. So some of the major ones, but the future sessions still continue. And of course, the US session will be continuing as all, or taking place as always. But the interesting thing is that despite this uh, closure of the actual markets, the futures were able of the DAX to almost reach an all time high, as I'm going to show you. And uh, basically effectively reverse the downward move that we saw at the end of last week. In addition to that, we have uh, not much in the economic calendar, but some things to, to keep an eye on are always central bank speeches. So we had the uh, Bank of Japan governor, some FOMC members, Bank of England Governor Bailey, who will be speaking at 3.30 p.m., and then an FOMC member busted. In addition to that, we have the end, basically, of the uh, earnings season in the U.S. today after market close. Nord Sun Corp, but a lot of, if not most of the major co companies that you would be following would probably have already declared or um, published their earning reports. When it comes to, as I said, the economic calendar, that's mainly what to keep an eye on. We have the Chicago Fed National Activity Index for April as well at 2.30, but uh, that usually doesn't tend to move the market. So let's move directly into the charts to take a look at what I was talking about. So if you're on the WhatsApp group, you will have seen the alert I sent on this on the DAX when it reached the basically all time high. You can see here testing previous all time high. After this downward move that saw the index drop to 14,955 points, which was about a 3.7% drop. And then we saw the the recovery on that end. So we saw a similar move also at the week, the previous week. So we saw a high and then pull back into a low and then another high reaching a new all time high. So this time it wasn't able to actually break through the all time high, but this level is acting as a resistance it seems at the moment. And as we move on with the session, it'll be interesting to see if it does manage to break through or if it does end up pulling back when it comes to the UK index, a little bit slower start. So similar recovery to the DAX, but obviously you can see a few different pullbacks also happening here and then some sideways trading. If we want to take a look at US indices, so S&P 500, US 500 on the platform, you'll see is trading around the 4,175 handle and approaching 4,180. We talked about this level on Friday because if you see there's potential double top here before this drop and it's also potential resistance as it acted as a resistance in the past. Even here, it briefly broke through it and then pulled back. So this area could be acting as a resistance, but it does remain to be seen. And of course, on the other end, we have the lower level uh, in this very tight and narrow range around 4,140 points, because then otherwise we'd have to go maybe even here, 4,000 and then 4,050. And this is obviously all on the hourly chart. So if you want to scale it back on a higher time frame, things would look slightly differently as well. If we want to take a look at the NASDAQ, which, as I'd like to mention, is similar in the short term, it seems to the S&P, but in the long term or in the bigger picture, you can see that the moves are slightly different in the sense that the NASDAQ is actually further away, usually from its all time high when it drops. So we've talked about again this on, on other videos on the XTB Live News, but I'd like to keep an eye out on this. So you can see this is the S&P. And you'll see this is the all-time high, and then the S&P actually, yeah, the index is about 1.5% from the all-time high, even after all the drops. When it comes to the US 500 or US 100, similar situation with the all-time high. And we can see here it's actually around 4% from the all-time high. So similar situation, but the setups in the short term you can see are quite similar, except that here we have the index crossing the double uh, top from the other um, that we saw in the other chart, but also not being able to break through this area around 30,500 points, which you can see previous price reaction. So also very important. A lot of these indices are testing uh, very important levels. And let's take a look at commodities to see what they're doing. Gold, you can see very volatile, but in, an, in a narrowing range. So you can see that the range in which it is actually moving is getting short, smaller and smaller. And after it, it broke through the Ichimoku cloud, you can see in the past, it then ended up testing it here on the hourly chart and it acted as a support several times around 1873 as well. So these areas that were actually tested in the past, and you can see the upward move for gold continuing, and then testing the high of 1890 a couple of times, 
and not being able to break through it, but then pulling back not as far as to break through the lower limit. So the range is narrowing here, you can see, as it started much wider, and we'll have to see which way it then ends up going if it, uh, if it does break through in either direction. But we can see that in the past we had several situations with ranges and then some break, uh, whether up or down. So it's going to be worth keeping an eye on for these levels as well on gold. Oil, on the other hand, oil has, is having a positive start to the day. So you can see that after the end of last week, which was slightly negative or quite negative, we ended up having this rebound today, about 4% on prices of oil from this morning. So, or rather about here, you can see it is about 1% up after uh, gaining 1.5%. So at the moment, Brent trading around 67.37. And you can see that if we want to look at the chart, so we have the Ichimoku cloud, so it did break through that. It is testing this purple line, which is the 100 SMA. We have maybe some potential support in this area, but in the bigger picture, it's not like the levels we saw on the indices. So these areas are important, obviously, because it did break through several areas and is trying to uh, increase the upward move. But we saw some tests also of this, the simple moving average 200 and wasn't able to break through it. So at the moment, hovering around 67.40. If we take a look at WTI, similar situation, obviously, you'll see the 200 SMA. And from the drop on the recovery as well, this continuing today for around here, 1.5% trading around 64.50. Let's take a look at currencies quickly. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin recovering around 37 or 38,000 after dropping once again to, you can see, around 34, 35,000. So... Crypto is still struggling, but important to keep an eye on on the fact or keep in mind that this is what the chart looks like on the long term. So, yes, there is this huge pullback, but this is where we started just a few months ago. So you can see the the entity of the the downward move is let's say fifty percent of the top of the top, uh, off the top from here to here. It's about three hundred percent. So interesting to keep an eye on. When it comes to actual uh, other currencies, we see US dollar performing quite negatively today, trading lower against all of these, euro and actually doing positively, except for these uh, emerging market currencies. We have the pounds quite negative, uh, New Zealand dollar positive, Australian dollar quite positive, and is Lotus, Poli, or Polish Zloty is doing uh, quite positively as well. But if we take a look at the pairs, we can see pound USD. So pound USD, quite interesting, again, at the end of last week, around 142, trading in this range, still main, uh, managing to maintain this range, even after dropping below it here. So we can see tested it as a support here, resistance here, unable to break through it. And we saw the pullback test of the Ichimoku cloud, both on the lower end and on the upper end. And then another pullback testing this 141 area, which obviously is both a psychological area and an important level to keep an eye on. And today we have the weakness of the dollar, but also the weakness of the pound. So let's see what's happening with the euro dollar instead. Euro dollar instead is actually doing positively today with 122 back above that. And you can see this is an overlaid US dollar index chart with the blue candles. And you can see that as the US dollar index pulls back slightly, we are seeing a pullback or an upward move of euro USD. And this helps, again, as I like to mention, identify whether it's from the weakness of the dollar or strength of the other currency. And in this case, as we also saw in the market analysis section, it is a bit of both. So we have the euro that is actually quite strong today, and then the dollar is actually quite weak. In other situations, you would find maybe a situation like this where neither is doing particularly well or they're both doing quite well, and you'll find a sideways move usually. But now we're seeing, again, euro pulling, um, euro, USD pulling back and the euro pushing upwards. So as we move through this week, it's going to be quite interesting to see all the macro uh, releases we have and any sort of um, information about any sort of inflation changes or uh, monetary policy changes from central banks. These have been moving markets a lot, even just speculation of that. So based on that, I hope you enjoyed this. We have a, a webinar this week, which I will be uh, talking about what's happening in the markets. So feel free to tune in. I'll be sending an invite as well. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Waleed Kudbani, Market Analyst for XTB. Good luck with your trading and then have a good day.